everybody loves water. Whether we're talking about the H2O we drink or the big pools we love to splash around in, we can't honestly live without it. But we aren't so aware of what exactly we put in our water. Let me ask you a question. How do you dispose of your unused pharmaceuticals? Do you place them in the trash? Or do you flush them down the toilet? Or are you one of those people who pours them down the drain? Think about it for a minute. According to University of Chicago researchers, every year there's over $2.3 billion worth of unused pharmaceuticals that end up in our waters. I am here today to make you think twice about your actions. Ever since I was a kid, I loved to be around water. I had a lake in my backyard, and growing up, it had always been such a huge part of me. Whenever it'd be sunny, the lake would shine like a million crystals. When it'd be stormy, the dark waters would crash up against the shore, bringing with it this dark beauty. But my backyard lake isn't one of the only places I love. The Congaree National Park in South Carolina is one of my favorite places to go with my friends and family. If you're not familiar with it, the park is this 24,000-acre park located in central South Carolina. It's actually the national park of the state. There's this one time I remember so vividly from the park. I was about eight years old, and I was biking with my dad on a hot summer day. As we zoomed on by, I noticed this flash of green out of the corner of my eye, and I went to investigate. It turns out it was this small green turtle crawling on the biking path. Since it was a hot summer day, I knew that this little guy was in desperate search of water, so I decided to help him out. I found the nearest lake, and I set him down at the water's edge. And sure enough, he scrambled into the cool waters. After this happened, my dad kept joking that I was basically this turtle, in spirit, always scrambling to the water's edge. With this in mind, when something bad happens to a place you hold so close to your heart, it almost shocks you, and that's exactly what happened to me. Two years ago, when I was in 10th grade, I was scrolling through the news when I came across an article about the park. It was found that there was a high mutation rate among the fish populations here. Scientists tested the waters and determined high levels of pharmaceuticals found within the rivers and streams of this park. As you can see here in this picture, this fish is not supposed to be silver and purple. It's the sign of a mutation. This shocked me and led me to do more online research on this topic. I found out that there are over 100 different types of pharmaceuticals found within the rivers and streams of the world. Sounds surprising, right? The most common way that pharmaceuticals are disposed of is by placing them in the trash and flushing them down the toilet. Even though filtration systems are effective at removing waste from the water system, 93% of pharmaceuticals are not detected by any sort of filtration device, which is why they end up in our aquatic environment. All these facts move me to do scientific research on this topic, and that's what I did in my 10th grade. I tested the effects of two of the most common drugs found at the park, Trisprintec, which is birth control, and metformin, which treats type 2 diabetes, on three prevalent aquatic species, snails, plants, and crustaceans. I completed experimentation by placing these organisms in separate habitats and gradually adding three different doses of pharmaceuticals to their environments over a period of time. I completed experimentation by testing for the mortality and reproduction of all the organisms, as well as the heart rate. The results I received back were alarming. Even with a minute quantity of pharmaceuticals used, which was into one to five parts per trillion level, both the mortality and heart rate went up drastically and brought down the heart rate. In my 11th grade, I decided to continue my research and come up with a plant-based filtration device that can filter out the already existing amount of pharmaceuticals in our waters right now. This filtration device has five parts, a settling tank, a pretreatment tank, an aeration tank, a coagulation tank, and a receiving tank. The settling tank is where the water initially comes in. It then goes into the 
pretreatment tank, which consists of fine sand, coarse sand, and sawdust, and initially filters out the larger particles from the water. The water then goes into the aeration tank, where the water is aerated, which expels the dissolved gases from the water. The water then goes into the coagulation tank, where there are two plant-based seeds there, and it acts as an absorbent, and it sucks out the pharmaceuticals from the water. The final purified water then goes into the receiving tank. I tested my filter on some of the most prevalent classes of pharmaceuticals found within the rivers and streams of North America, some of which are antibiotics, antidepressants, birth control drugs, among others. Results revealed that my filter was able to remove up to 80% of all the contaminants I tested. But even though... <laughs> Even though a solution to filter our water is critical, I think priority should be given on preventing these contaminants from entering our water in the first place. So what can we do as consumers of pharmaceuticals and scientists of our era? The only way this problem can be stopped is through community awareness and proper information regarding this issue. Think about a nine-year-old healthy girl. She could be your daughter, your granddaughter, or even your neighbor's kid drinking this contaminated water for a few years. Could you imagine what kind of abnormalities she could develop, not even knowing the source from where these problems are coming from? So let me ask you again, what do we do with the unused drugs that pile up in our shelves? Some of the pharmacy chains have recently started to have drug take-back kiosks where they will take back your unused drugs. Some of the counties around your state have also started to have collection days where they will come around and pick up your unused drugs, similar to the trash and recycling service you have in your area. Contacting your local law enforcement agency is the best way to find out whether your county sponsors these collection days. Contacting your city or government's trash and recycling service is the best way to learn about the medical disposal guidelines and options in your area. There are also drug disposal bags where you can place your crushed, unused drugs into these bags and the ingredients will neutralize it. So when you do throw away your drugs, it won't affect our environment. Everyone really enjoys the beauty that nature has to offer. And by disposing of your drugs properly, you're helping to preserve this beauty for many generations to come. I'm doing my part by bringing awareness. Now it's your turn to do your part by not putting these drugs in our water in the first place. I started a community outreach program in my 10th grade to make people aware of the impacts of improperly disposing of their drugs. And whenever I'm out supporting this cause, I always like to take the time to think about the little turtle that I saved with his cute little fins and big beady eyes. But now I wonder, that turtle that I saved, was it desperately searching for water, or was it actually running from it? Thank you.